The Copernican principle states that the Earth is not in a special place in the universe. Us humans are not privileged observers, we're observing the same universe as anybody else that's out there. And it says that the observations we make from Earth are representative of observations taken from like an average random position in the universe. It's named after Copernicus, the mathematician who put the Sun and not the Earth in the center of his mathematical model of the solar system. He was, in essence, the first to demote the Earth from being in a special place in the universe in humans' models of what's going on. So the Copernican principle says there's nothing unique about Earth's position in space and that the laws of physics here are the same as anywhere else in the universe. It is the main philosophical and physical assumption that underlies the entirety of cosmology, which is a branch of astrophysics that deals with the formation and evolution of the entire universe. So every theory we have about the universe, from the Big Bang Theory to what's known as Lambda CDM, which gives us the famous pie chart of normal matter, dark matter, and dark energy, all of them have the Copernican Principle at their foundation. Because if the Copernican Principle doesn't hold, then all of our observations, our theory, our models are completely null, right? Because if Earth is in a special place in the universe, then we have a biased view of what's going on. And yet, the Copernican Principle has never been fully proven because it can't be proven, right? It's a philosophical assumption at heart, not a fully fledged scientific theory. Having said that though, we can test this assumption using our observations of the universe. So in this video, we're gonna dive in and chat first about why we can't prove the Copernican Principle, then about the evidence in support of the Copernican Principle, and then about the evidence against the Copernican Principle. And I know big conversations about the universe and these big underlying assumptions can be scary for some of you because they're just an existential crisis waiting to happen that you cannot protect yourself from. But you know what's even scarier? The internet. And luckily, thanks to today's video sponsor, Surfshark, you can protect yourself on the internet. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network, and it's essentially a middleman between your computer and the scary internet, which means that your private information, your location, and what you're doing is all hidden from anybody who happens to be snooping. Surfshark is crucial for me as an academic because I'm always working on public Wi Fi networks, whether that's in my office or the university library or when traveling for work. It means that no one can snoop on that unreleased research paper that I'm writing or on my credit card information while I'm online shopping. Plus, Surfshark can actually help you get the best price when online shopping because the price that you're shown on a website often depends on where you are in the world, your location, especially when it comes to flight prices. So Surfshark helps you get the best deals, which means I can make the most out of my research travel budget. Plus, Surfshark even has an antivirus software that shields your devices from viruses online like malware and ad tracking. Look, there's no risk with trying out Surfshark because they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So try them out today by heading to surfshark.com slash Dr. Becky, or you can click on that link in the video description below and you'll get four additional months free on your subscription, which is a great deal for all of you. So thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and for protecting us all from the scary internet. And now let's get back to chatting about the scary universe and talk first about why we can't prove the Copernican Principle. Scientifically speaking, we cannot prove that the Earth is not in a special location in the universe because to do so, we would have to have observations from a load of other places in the universe to compare it to. We cannot move the Earth around, sadly, we are stuck in one place. So we can't do a proper repeatable scientific experiment to even test this, never mind, prove it. But we can make observations of the universe that will either support or not support the idea of the Copernican Principle. But to jump from there to an actual proof, you actually start to get into a load of philosophical arguments about what your burden of proof is. Like how much evidence do you need to collect in favour of something before you assume a proof by what's known as evidence of absence. So you've collected enough evidence to show that something isn't there as opposed to like an absence of evidence where you haven't collected any evidence at all. Which brings me to my next point. 
what evidence do we have in support of the Copernican principle? Well, after that first Copernican shift of the Earth from, you know, not only just shifting it from the centre of the solar system, but therefore not at the centre of the universe, as it was thought back in the 16th and 17th centuries, through the 18th and 19th centuries, we then saw like a, a train of evidence that the Earth was not special. First, we had William Herschel's map of the stars in our Milky Way galaxy, which then put the sun on the edge of the map, not at the centre at all. Then in the 1920s, Edwin Hubble showed that the fuzzy blobs in the sky were so distant that they were actually galaxies of stars in their own right. Islands of stars just like our own Milky Way galaxy. So not only was the Earth not special, the Sun wasn't special, and the Milky Way itself also wasn't special. Not only that, but later in 1929, Hubble showed that those galaxies appeared to be moving away from us at a speed proportional to how far away they were. An observation that was eventually understood to mean that space itself is expanding. The space between galaxies was growing, making it appear like galaxies were moving away from us. This expansion was the same in all directions, with all galaxies moving apart from each other. Once again, showing that the Earth in the Milky Way was nothing special. We've lived through a similar shift in perspective in the past 20 years with the slew of discovery of exoplanets, so planets in orbit around other stars in the Milky Way. Some that are the same size as Earth, with atmospheres, even some with water in their atmospheres. Once again, humbling us all to show us that Earth is nothing special. But in the late 90s and early 2000s, people realised they were going to need a better test of the Copernican Principle when it faced its first proper challenge. In 1998, recent collaborators showed that if you took Hubble's observations of galaxies out even further, that those at larger distances were moving away faster than expected from a constant expansion rate of the universe. Now, people realised that this could either be because the universe's expansion rate was accelerating, and that acceleration was driven by some unknown component of the universe that we now call dark energy, or that the Copernican principle didn't hold, and that we were, in fact, in some special corner of the universe, and it's only when we looked further afield that we realised that our measurements here didn't match the measurements further away. So during this time, we saw many research papers pop up proposing tests of the Copernican Principle. Some that didn't have the data to actually do that test yet, and some that did have the data, albeit not the best by today's standards, but still ended up concluding in favour of the Copernican Principle, which meant that dark energy must exist. Since then, we've done huge galaxy surveys of the positions of galaxies out to great distances, like the Sloan Digital Sky Survey that I'm showing here, or 2DF, right? These allow you to put together this 3D map of the universe and zoom out to see what it looks like on the largest of scales, and you see, on average, it all kind of looks the same. Plus, the Planck satellite also resolved the cosmic microwave background the oldest light in the universe that we receive from all directions. And you find that it is the same across all directions of the sky, down to at least one part in a thousand, and then you start to see just like random fluctuations. But the big piece of evidence in favour of the Copernican principle holding was actually the discovery of another piece of evidence in favour of dark energy, driving this accelerated expansion of the universe, something known as the integrated sachs wolf effect, where particles of light from the cosmic microwave background actually have their energies change when they pass through areas of higher gravity. So if we think about gravity as kind of like, you know, like, a well, right? In Einstein's theory of general relativity, he says that massive objects curve space. So if you have a massive object like a galaxy or even a galaxy cluster, right, you can imagine, okay, light is traveling on that space and it's gonna gain energy as it like rolls down the gravity hill, but then it's gonna have to expend energy getting back out again on the other side. Now, if those two things are symmetrical, then, you know, the gain in energy will be canceled out by the energy it then has to expend getting out. But, if dark energy is present in the universe, that changes the shape of those gravitational wells as the universe accelerates in expansion. So the energy that the photon gains going down is not the same amount of energy it then has to expend getting out the other side. That leaves an imprint on the cosmic microwave background which we can detect, and it is the strongest piece of evidence that we have for dark energy which means that that result from recent collaborators in 1998 doesn't violate the Copernican Principle 
at all. If anything, it supports it more. So do we actually have any evidence against the Copernican principle? Well, there is one main challenge and it's called the KBC void. It's named after Keenan, Barger and Cowie, the three astrophysicists who published this result in 2013, who found that the region around the Milky Way is under dense compared to the rest of the universe on average, what's known as a void. The KBC void is a two billion light year across sphere-ish containing less galaxies on average than the rest of the observable universe. That would mean the Milky Way, and therefore us as observers here on Earth, are in a special place in the universe that's different from the norm, which means that our observations aren't representative of some average place in the universe. They will instead be biased as we look through this KBC void, and therefore we would violate the Copernican principle. However, Having said that, an extension of the Copernican principle is what's known as the cosmological principle. It says that, okay, if the Earth isn't in a special place in the universe, then you can assume the universe is both homogeneous and isotropic. Homogeneous meaning that matter is evenly distributed in the universe and isotropic meaning it looks the same in all directions. At least that's true on the largest scales anyway. If we zoom back into local scales, you will obviously get some natural random variation. And it's that natural random variation that's important because if you simulate, you know, using our best model of the universe that we have that contains normal matter and dark matter and dark energy and you put in all the laws of physics that we know of as well into a computer and simulate what pops out in terms of what the universe looks like, then yes, you do create big clusters of galaxies and big voids between galaxies. So you have over-dense regions and under-dense regions, all of which have varying sizes. And what you get out is like a statistical distribution saying, okay, well, what sizes of void should I expect then given all these laws of physics and like the random fluctuations that you'll get from just matter clumping together. And the size of the KBC void is right on the edge of that distribution. You should expect it from natural variation. Obviously things of that size will be a lot rarer. And because it is right on the tail end, it sort of like pushes the limits of our models, but people have argued that because of that, it therefore doesn't violate the Copernican principle. Meaning that even though we are in the KBC void, it is still representative of the universe as a whole. And therefore we're not in a special position. However, now we know that we're here, we do have to take into account like the effects that being in a void has on our observations. We have to correct for that known bias. So as far as we can tell, we assume that the Copernican principle still holds, that the Earth is not in a special place in the universe. Now, thankfully, we've got some new telescopes coming up, including the Euclid Space Telescope and the Rubin Observatory that will collect the data we need to do more tests on the Copernican principle. But again, we cannot scientifically prove the Copernican principle. All we can do is philosophically prove it by collecting enough evidence of absence. The Copernican principle. Yes, <laughs> doubt myself on the first thing. Copernican principle, so it's not. All of them have the Copernican principle at their foundation. And without the Copernican, Copernican, Copernican principle, Copernican principle. Boom, smashed it. What is that, 32 minutes? Oh, she's a pro. She a pro.